I climbed out of my head and watched myself implode A thought without a body ought to be the shot to take a load Off my brain is poisoned and I'm searching for the antidote But every time I find it, my defense is scream, oh no you don't, whoa Number one person you should be afraid of Is somebody who has nothing to lose And I have nothing to lose Hey, it's your Uncle Herman here, and I'm still an alpha male. Today I wanted to look into the controversial world of Gabby Hanna. I'm aiming to use this video to analyse how she got herself into this position and not to add to what she cites as online hate videos. And by this position I mean her becoming one of the most antagonised internet personalities of the past year or so. Gabby Hanna is a person who, like all of us, has made a lot of mistakes. But since she's been living in the public eye, these mistakes have been broadcasted and she's seemingly been very demonised on the internet by a lot of people, including myself even. So you may know Gabby for her going viral a couple of years ago with her genius interview, or if you've been around for a bit longer, you might know her from her dramatic anecdotal videos. How can you just like, insane? Or even longer and you might know her from Vine, which was where she started building her platform back in 2013. After gaining nearly 6 million Vine followers, she migrated to YouTube and created her channel The Gabby Show, and she had a pretty good reputation right up until just under two years ago, around 2018. So the first thing that got people's attention was when she became a meme for singing her own song in a genius interview. So what if I'm the monster? Now, this meme circulated the internet for a while in 2018 and people were having a good old laugh and she tried to join in so we weren't laughing at her, but with her, which to be fair is a good move in theory. However, when she made her response video reacting to the memes that had been made of her, we began to see her start to show signs of making excuses and passing the blame. If it was me editing it, I probably would have used all of the audio from the camera. I wanted to scream. That's how the song is written. That's like my style. She blamed Genius. She blamed the people who did the interview. She blamed the microphone. She refused to admit that maybe it was on her and said that Screaming was an artistic st <laughs> was an artistic style choice. As an isolated event, that's not necessarily a negative thing, but since she has been known for passing the blame a lot since, it's maybe one of our first examples of her doing this. So then one of her first major controversies came later in 2018 when she accepted a brand deal with a brand called Kenza Cosmetics that sold what they claimed to be high quality brushes for very low prices. Now, of course, when an influencer promotes something like this to their young, impressionable fans who probably don't have a lot of disposable income to spend on luxuries like makeup brushes, they're going to be easily lured into buying these brushes that someone they trust is promoting to them. And in her Instagram story, she claims that the brushes are worth $80, now reduced to next to nothing where you only pay for shipping. Now, of course, these brushes were not as promised, with many of them being extremely low quality and some fans not receiving brushes at all. But this wasn't the only thing that sparked her bad reputation, as other influencers had accepted this brand deal and issued apologies respectively. So why was hers so disliked? Well, mainly because she didn't really apologise to fans. She just sat there with all the money that she'd made from the brand deal in her pocket, telling people to manage their expectations and not taking any accountability for misleading her fans. So I'm not sure what quality people were expecting when they paid $10 for 10 brushes. And I'm genuinely sorry if anybody got their product and was disappointed in the product. But I would also add, manage your expectations a little bit. Since this controversy, she's been in a lot of drama over the past year and a half or so with a bunch of other YouTubers on the platform, notably Trisha Paytas, The Vlog Squad, and Jesse Smiles, who was an ex-friend of hers. Now, many of them have made videos on her and accused her of being manipulative and starting drama. She says, I don't like bringing people's names into it. I don't like starting the drama. This is where you need help. It's not gaslighting, it's help because there is proof in your fucking pudding, Gabby. And these are, of course, all accusations and the pure amount of drama out there in this circle of people is baffling, to be honest. And just when I thought I understood what was going on, I got completely lost again. 
But to sum up, there are lots of texts, lots of rumours, lots of name calling, lots of people exposing DMs, and I don't really want to go into every single instance of this in too much detail because I feel like I'm 13 again getting into petty friend drama because he said this and she said this, etc. But one drama that did escalate quite a lot was when Trisha Paytas made a video exposing Gabby for telling the person that she was dating, Jason Nash, that Trisha had herpes, allegedly. She texted Jason and she told Jason, or I guess, I don't know if she texted him or told him in person, but basically she told him, hey, be careful, Trisha has herpes and you're sleeping with her and blah, blah, blah. Gabby, have we slept together? Did I show you my STD results? Have, are you my doctor? Which is some of the weirdest drama to have gone so public. But then Gabby came onto Instagram to essentially rant and she even polled her own fans asking if what she did was right or not. And I don't know how low you have to go to poll your young, mostly preteen fans who already likely are going to agree with you about whether telling someone about an STI was right or not. She knew that she was going to get the answer that she wanted from that poll because all the people following her obviously like her and agree with her views. So it seems like she did these stories just to try and convince herself of her own narrative more than anything. Uh, another question, would you consider that like gossip and rumors to talk to the one person who it's about and be like, hey, check it out, ask them about it, have an adult conversation about it. Is that gossip or is that just like being a friend? And I don't know, I just feel like drama that's based off people allegedly saying things to each other should really be dealt with privately between the people involved and not broadcasted to the internet. Then she got into some hot water again after a video by YouTuber Rachel Oates went semi-viral analyzing her poetry and exposing her poetry book released in 2017 for being a very rushed and lazy sort of cash grab. All of these are bad, but they are usually subsets and products of laziness. And that's how I feel about this piece of text that I'm not sure I can even bring myself to call a poem. The poems were basically just tweets. They were the equivalent of the Just Girly Things Tumblr page, and she made a video recently trying to defend herself and comparing herself to Bo Burnham. I like to write in a way that can be interpreted in a lot of different ways depending on how you read it or where you put the emphasis, which in my opinion is what all good poems do. I didn't write in all seriousness. I wrote it as a joke because I love Bo Burnham, because I love Shel Silverstein, because I love dealing with my trauma in funny ways. But I mean, poetry is subjective, of course, and her fans can find meaning in it and that's fine, but to me it just seems like another pointless YouTuber book. Now, around the same time that she made this video defending her poetry, she went semi-viral again by making a TikTok trying to send a powerful message about cyberbullying by writing misspelled words on her face and then wiping them off. She unfortunately once again became the butt of an internet joke about the pure ridiculousness and unnecessary nature of the video, and she started getting into Twitter feuds with people who were laughing at her. I fucking Shane bullies, y'all. and they want to come and say you're 29 years old and how you're acting. You're I'm not you're a fucking, fucking girl. Girl. Now, her Twitter, in my opinion, is a bit of a hot mess. It's clearly taking a huge toll on her. I mean, I've never seen someone in her position interact so much with random people on the internet. I think it's a bit of a catch-22 in that she keeps tweeting and engaging to try and repair her reputation, but the more she does it, the more negative attention she gets. And then most recently she's taken to Twitter to illustrate her elaborate conspiracy theory that YouTube has shadow banned her, which essentially means that they're not promoting her content, allegedly. Now the basis of her argument was that her new music video didn't end up on the trending page and didn't get as much engagement as usual, and instead of looking at herself and maybe seeing why people weren't engaging with her content, she immediately blamed external sources. She jumps so quickly to these elaborate conclusions to justify her narrative and just starts drama so fast, and she didn't even seem to consider that maybe her subscribers just aren't as interested in her music. 
I mean, YouTube did eventually give in and put her on trending and it got a decent amount of views. But since she's built a platform off of vlogging, drama videos and Vine, it doesn't surprise me from an analytical point of view why people who subbed to her before she started pushing her music career would not be interested in the video. Her most popular videos are vlogs and collabs from around 2016 to 17, so it doesn't take a genius. <laughs> to realise that not everyone in the audience is going to be interested in her music. In the same way that if a music channel posted a skincare routine, not as many people would click on it as that's not the content that they subscribed for. So to bring this video to a close, I think overall that Gabby Hanna is trying so hard to defend herself constantly that I actually do feel a little sorry for her. It's clearly taking a toll on her mental health and I mean I've never seen someone so desperately try to convince others and themselves that they're happy and content and have loads of friends. I'm so corny and cliche but I'm doing stuff that makes me happy like every day I get to wake up and write music and record and perform and focus so much on that and you know inspire and help people in the process and you know, I'm in such a like healthy happy genuinely good place. I have three amazing friends that I hang out with don't talk about anybody, don't do it, like I, I'm in my fucking house. So I do hope that she is one day able to distance herself from social media for her own sake. Thanks again for watching this video if you made it to the end and do subscribe if that's something you want to do. You can follow me on Twitter as usual for updates and if you have any video suggestions you can tweet me or leave them in the comments and I will add them to my list. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.